On this episode of Expedition Apparition, we travel to Crown Point, Indiana to investigate the Crown Point Jail, which housed many inmates from the 1920s through 1970. The jail's most famous inmate was John Dillinger, who was declared as America's public enemy number one. Crown Point Jail was known for its maximum security, of course, until Dillinger escaped from it in 1934. Tonight we will reach out to the spirits of the jail, hoping to find evidence of the paranormal. My name's Tyler Kruzek. I'm a filmmaker and paranormal investigator. And this is Joe Boyd, our lead investigator and equipment tech. After our countless personal experiences and interest in the paranormal, we decided to create Expedition Apparition Paranormal. I am standing where Al Capone used to be. The Al Capone. If it's somebody different, can you come, come up clo closer and make it do it again? Oh, thank, thank you. you. What's your name? With our young age, unbiased opinions, and a wide array of equipment, we investigate locations that claim to have paranormal activity, hoping to find evidence of the existence of life after death. We document all of our investigations so you can experience what we experience during our investigations firsthand. Oh my god! Oh my god, I just saw a freaking shadow out of the Where? corner of my eye. Where? We're here in historic Crown Point, Indiana, where tonight we'll be investigating the Crown Point Jail. Hopefully we'll make connection with the guards, prisoners, and maybe, if we're lucky, John Dillinger. We're here at one of the tunnels in Crown Point Jail, and many reports of activity are reported here. There's a lot of shadows that go back and forth through this hall. They say it's more of a residual haunting in this hall. And a lot of people get paranoid, there's a lot of people getting pushed and scratched and stuff like that. And you know, you can hear people banging on the jail cells from all the way down here. And you just, it's a weird feeling down here. I'm outside John Dillinger's jail cell right now where he made his famous escape. Where he actually carved a gun out of a bar of soap and tricked officers into thinking it was a real gun. jail cells. I mean, the conditions in this jail are not good, so there's a lot of angry souls here, and you can just feel it. I mean, a lot of reports here, like banging on the jail cells, a lot of dark shadows, and a lot of people being grabbed in here, and this is one of the most dark places of this jail. On the top floor of the jail, which is where the juveniles were housed, you could definitely feel the energy up here. And oh, there's everything's original up here, it's barely been touched. You can actually see some people like carved how many days left of their sentence they have in here. It's all still on these beds, there's names on these beds. It's, it's freaking creepy. To start off the investigation, we headed upstairs to where the juveniles were held. We conducted an EVP session up there, but did not catch any evidence of the paranormal. After investigating the rest of the jail and not catching anything, we investigated the cell block where Dillinger was held before he made his great escape. We started off with the PSB7 session, where we caught some interesting pieces of evidence. Is anyone here with us right now? Yep. Ted? What are you in jail for? Murder? That's what I thought. Who did you kill? Who did you murder? Kelly? Kelly. 
How long are you in jail for for that? Four. How long? Long. Long. After that PSP7 session, we decided to bring Sonny Boland and other members of Into the Night Paranormal with us to conduct a spirit box session. During that session, we caught some interesting responses. No. No, I can't. Yeah? <laughs> Who's in here with us right now? Can you tell me your name? Were you here when John Dillinger was here? No. Were you here after John Dillinger? Sonny? Yeah, that's my name. You guys keep calling my name. What do you want? Those two, you want these two boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a girl. Yeah. All right, what's your name? Hmm? After that ghost box session, we decided to wrap up our investigation. Unfortunately, we did not catch any EVPs during the investigation, mainly because of the extreme amount of contamination we received from the various motorcycles and people walking around downtown Crown Point. However, we did receive some interesting ghost box responses. The jail's creepy vibe gives us a feeling that there could be a possibility that many inmates did not leave the jail and are still roaming the jail's cell blocks. However, we look forward to investigating Crown Point again in the near future to see if we could compile any more evidence to help us prove that there could be spirits still roaming the jail.